So we took out our TP9 Elite Subcompact today. Um, we bought it maybe three, four weeks ago. Um, we took it and we shot 108 rounds out of it. Uh, we also took the Grand Power P11, which is very comparable to the to the Canic. Uh, they're both cleared, uh, but for the sake of the safety Nazis out there, where is the damn? There it is. So it's clear. Magazine's empty. And we're going to clear the uh, canic as well. Mag is empty. There is nothing in the chamber. Okay. So, um, we took out both of these guns. So, we decided to take out the Grand Power again because it's very comparable. They're both roughly the same size. Um... Same barrel length, same grip length, same grip uh, thickness. Uh, the only difference is that, the only major difference is that this has a rotating barrel, which is going to negate uh, recoil. But we have an, X <clears throat> an XD9, we have an XD45. Uh, we've carried both of those, and I'm carrying XD45 now. I've been carrying it for like the last year and a half, two years. Um, so, uh, um, Reasoning I'm, I'm mentioning all that is because my very first impression with the Canic was that it is very snappy. And this is coming from a guy who has shot a lot of rounds from subcompacts, has carried subcompacts for years. Um, so it's not that I'm not used to carrying and shooting subcompacts. Um, in fact, the XD9 and XD45 are actually smaller than this gun. There are true subcompacts. This is not. This is just a big, it's like a small compact. And, and the same with the Grand Power, which is why I wanted to compare them. Uh, um, so, yes, this is snappy. Uh, we fired 147 grain uh winchester white box um jhp which uh was throwing flames uh and at first i thought that it was the ammo that was causing this to be snappy but then when i shot uh 115 grain of winchester not 100 115 grain of wolf uh and 124 grain uh remington uh both of those being fmj um, the gum was not any less snappy. Um, so really, I think it's 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 just a gun. It's the gun that's snappy. Um, I don't understand why uh, this gun is snappy when my other uh, guns of the same size, using the same ammo, are not. So. Um, Maybe it's because of the high bore axes, but XD, XDs aren't really considered low bore axes either. So uh, I don't I don't think that that's it. It could be it though. I'm I'm not sure. I, I'm really not. Um, the grip textures on the front and back strap have dots. They grip into your palm, and uh, they work well. Um, but really it's, the gun is snappy and it's not, it's not slipping in my hands. What it's doing is it's kicking my, <clears throat> my hand up, my wrist and probably my forearms. So it might be a strength issue, but I don't understand why I'm having issues with this particular gun when the other guns that I have, um, aren't giving me problems. You know, the XD45, it's a 45 ACP chambered XD. And you, you want to talk about snap, um, you would think that that XD9 and the XD45 would be just as snappy, if, if not snappier, 
um, but they're not. Um, so, so I, I, I don't know. Maybe this is lighter. Maybe that could be it, because I've shot Glocks before. Uh, you know, I, I shot 40 before out of a metal all metal gun, and then when I tried to shoot 40 out of a a, a Glock, I had issues. So I don't, I'm not sure if it's a weight issue. It could be a weight issue. Uh, but anyways, uh, we shot 108 rounds out of the Canic today, and 72 rounds out of the Grand Power today. So. Um, look at some of these uh, targets here so this one's at seven rounds we shot between seven and 15 rounds today uh, this first one was seven rounds uh, seven yards at 147 uh, using 147 grain Winchester white box JHP uh, we shot both uh, both magazines and I made a note here that the gun is snappy so here you go there Come on, focus camera. Shit. Every time it goes into focus, it go it loses it. Okay, so there. You can see I hit the the bullseye like four times. So this is actually a pretty good uh, start. Even though the gun is snappy, I'm still accurate. So uh, so there is that. That's a huge plus in fact. So this is at seven yards. This is 12 rounds of wolf. 115 grain and 15 rounds of Remington 124 grain and I made another note that the gun is still snappy after firing this so there you go I grazed the bullseye with one round but uh, did quite a bit of a uh, grouping at uh, low left and left so that's this is still good in my opinion um, so I, I highlighted the ammo here because I made a switch with the second target thinking that the 147 grain was what you know was what was making the uh, the canic snappy uh, it's still snappy after changing around so it's it's not a it's not an ammo issue that's making now the gun snappy so this is at 10 yards I decided to back it up and go back to the 147 grain so we shot 147 grain out of both magazines at 10 yards. Here I am still tapping uh, the bullseye. I hit it three times. Uh, most of those are in the, excuse me, heartburn. Uh, most of those are in the black. And then we had another one, same thing, another uh, target 10 yards, 147 grain between uh, both rounds, I mean both magazines, jeez. Okay, so this was the last uh, target uh, for the Canic. And as you can see, by this time, I'm still grouping pretty well, but I'm no longer uh, hitting the, the bullseye. Uh, so this is this is the last bit. Uh, this is like the 108 round mark or around there, 100 round mark. Um, and, uh, and I wanted to kind of talk about this because I'm sitting there, I'm aiming at this. I'm all I'm all uh, all I'm hitting is this. So again, it's in the black, and you know I don't have to hit uh, the bullseye. To kind of prove that uh, that the gun that you know that the gun has an aiming issue or doesn't have a gaming issue, an aiming issue, um, I can still hit the black, and I mean as long as it's not buckshotting around, um, all of this is me. I'm pretty sure if someone else took the gun, they wouldn't have, you know, they would probably tighten that up. But uh, that being said, I was aiming for this, and it, as you can see with the other targets. I'm actually touching the, the target, uh, the, the bullseye, but you know, by the 100 round mark, I'm kind of stressed out, I'm tired of trying to fight, you know, that, that recoil and that snap, so, uh, so there's that. So, um, that's the only con I have with the gun, that it's snappy. Um, 
does that mean you know does the snappy I guess characteristics mean that I am you know no longer considering the gun as a carry option uh, no um, it just means I have to practice and think of some ways to kind of uh, negate that recoil I could strengthen my wrists and forearms um, I could also get some grip tape talon grips or hog rubber slip on grips um, to help with that um, or I can actually get a light for caliber ammo uh, that's an option as well all of that combined might help some uh, we'll see as we go along I do like like the gun a lot um, I just uh, you know I, I think I can deal with most cons of a gun but you know of my list of cons you know things I don't want to deal with in guns the number one is you know snap and uh, I'm a little bit disappointed but anyways uh so we'll talk about this gun the grand power I used to carry this one um, of all my guns this one has the most rounds right now I have close to 1600 rounds out of this handgun it's one of the first guns I've owned uh, probably third or fourth um, I shot 72 rounds out of it today I shot 115 round Bellum um, and I shot 150 round Wolf from it um, I did not shoot any of the Remington uh, because it, this gun does not like Remington in my experience it's always choked on it um, and in fact it usually chokes on it usually doesn't like uh, Wolf either um, it, you know Wolf gums it up uh, but um, um, forgot what I was saying my daughter popped in here um, but yeah um, the Grand Power um, the last time I, I took it to the range before today was November of 2018 um, the difference between now and then is I'm using a hoax slip on for this because I think I've complained about the slickness of the sides of the grip uh, before and other people have as well for this particular gun um, and we got a new recoil spring uh, I'm thinking and looking at the old range notes this is what was causing the failure to return the battery issues um, I dry fired this a lot so um, maybe the dry firing the racking and, and you know and charging the weapon maybe that uh, put additional wear on this um, I think a lot of people they don't factor that in when they have a, a handgun and uh, if that's the case um, I, you know like again I, I dry fired this a lot um, especially when I was carrying it and trying to get used to the trigger um, so I would like to say that that you know me dry firing it could actually double uh, the wear on the springs you know whereas this has almost 1600 rounds um, maybe the fact that uh, I was racking and dry firing this just as much as I was firing it at the range um, you could say that this this gun had 3,000 rounds on the uh, on the recoil spring so I I changed it um, and that helped it a lot and so we're gonna look at I put I said 72 rounds up through it this is the first uh, two mags 10 yards using that ammo that I mentioned earlier look at that and I'm picking up this gun after almost four years of it sitting in the safe there's no snap on this gun As well, uh, we have a target where I was shooting 10 and 15 rounds. 
I think I shot it 10 rounds and then moved it 15 rounds. Uh, <laughs> I moved 10 yards. Uh, and I keep saying rounds because when I'm when I'm writing my notes, it my my, my penmanship looks like I'm writing rounds and I'm writing yards. So we put this out at 10 yards and we shot uh, two mags. And then we put it at 15 yards and we shot two mags. Um, so again, we shot Wolf and Bellum. Uh, this is four mags worth, so 48 rounds. And again, you know, of course, it's spread out a little bit because we're shooting and those. These right here on the edges are probably the 15 rounds, uh, 15 yards. Jeez. Uh, but anyways, uh, you can see I'm accurate with this, and and that's why I wanted to benchmark. You know, got another subcompact here, roughly the same size as this, and you got one that has a serious amount of snap, and this one who with, with that doesn't. Uh, so, um, is the snap messing with my, uh, my, uh, I guess, what do you call it? My aiming? No. Uh, otherwise, you, those, uh, Canic targets, uh, you know, that I shot with the Canic, um, those targets wouldn't, uh, they would be a whole, they would look a whole lot worse than they, than they do. Um, I don't have a problem with, uh, uh, flinching or, or anticipating recoil. The problem is with dealing with the, the recoil. Um, I will attach or at least put cards on the end, you know, at the end of the video. Let's see what we're at the 17 minute mark. I want to make note of that note of that particular timestamp so that I can put the cards there so you can see them maybe now. Uh, so I'm going to put the cards there. And the cards are going to be video footage of both guns. Just a, a quick segment of me shooting in our, uh, two, two mags from each gun. Um, so you can see how I'm dealing with the recoil and see which one's recoiling more. Um, my, there's nothing wrong with my grip. Um, I think that I have a grip issue, but there's nothing wrong with me in the, the way I'm gripping the gun. It's more of my strength probably uh, I have to be able to try and deal with the snap on this gun so I might have to I might have to do some exercises or do something to kind of beef up my wrist um, wrists and maybe even forearms so we'll, we'll see how that goes uh, but um, I'll put cards at the 17 minute mark and I will also, uh, at the end of the video, I guess, uh, select the two videos of the, the two particular guns at the range uh, after the fact, you know, so that either way you can select them. You can select the cards or you can wait to the end of the video footage here and uh, select each one that's on the screen. I'll put one on the left and one on the right. All right. Um, I will keep you guys up to date, updated on, on my progress with the gun and my maybe my strengthening of my my wrists and, and forearms, and uh, even with this gun, um, I almost have a uh, I, I have a craving to maybe carry this gun again. Um, it brought back uh, some nice memories of a. Uh, my experiences with it when I was carrying it and when I was taking it to the range uh, it, it is a very nice shooting gun um, again it's DA this is the model that uh, does not have the uh, the decocker this was before they started offering the decocked versions uh, man please don't argue with me about this because I've had people tell me there's no such thing as a decocker. Yes, there is. This is proof right here. This is a P11 Mark 12 without a decocker. You see that? It flips up and it's a safety. It doesn't flip down. This is this is unmodified. This came straight from the maker. 
So just because you don't believe it doesn't mean it that isn't the case. You know, maybe when when this particular gun came out, you were still in in grade school. You know, I don't know, but uh, this is what they were selling back then. So uh, I expect to see someone making some snide ass comment that I'm gonna have to delete regarding that because it's happened before. I don't understand why people make the stupid ass comments like that they're just making themselves look like idiots but anyways um we will uh keep you guys uh informed on our experience experiences with the uh with the canic all right bye-bye